You want to visualize the overall status of a project or sales development, then did you know that you can take a table and then do some magic and turn it into a status bar? Let me show you how it's done. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn everything about Power BI. Now, let's have a look how we can build that status bar. Now, it all starts with creating a helper table that contains the status categories that we want to use later for our status bar. Okay, so we can do this by going to enter data. And then here we can make two columns, one for the status ID, and another one for the status description. And let's say we want to have five statuses. So one, two, three, four, five. And then in the second column, we can put in the descriptions. So here we have very bad, bad, neutral, good, and very good. Now this last line, I don't need it. Let's click on delete. And let's name this table status bar. All right, so we have our little helper table with two columns, status ID, status description. And in our example, we are going to have five different status categories. Now, the next thing that we need to do is build two measures, one for the current status and one that's gonna help us to put in a little indicator. The first one I'm gonna call status. We're going to start off by creating a variable that stores the key metric that will determine what the status will be. So for us, for this example, that is going to be the difference to the forecast. And I already created this measure and I'm just gonna to refer to that measure. Okay, so sales versus forecast percentage difference. Okay, so now we have to determine what the different cutoff points are for our status categories and then take that value and put it in one of these status categories. Now. A perfect function for this is the switch function, where we are going to use the true expression as the first argument. And then we want to check for different conditions that determine then the status category. Let's now refer back to the variable that we just created. So difference to forecast when it's below or equal to minus 10%, so 0.1. Then I want to assign it to the first status category. Now let's duplicate this line so that we have one line for each category. Okay, so let's select the line and then duplicate it five times. And over here we have category one, two, three, four, five. And then we can change the cutoff points. So let's say minus 5%, then we have plus five, then we have plus 10 and bigger than 10. Oh, I just missed some zeros over there. So let's add those as well. And now the measure is fixed. Then we need to add one more measure. Now this measure will be the pointer that points to the correct status category. Okay, so let's call it pointer. And also here we can use some variables. So the first one is going to be the status ID. And here I can use the selected value function to return the status ID when there's only one value there. And now we want to compare that with the current status. So let's add another variable for that. So current status, and that is that measure that we just created before. So over here, there it is. And let's put in our return statement. Now we can use our switch function again. So switch, and then for the expression, we're going to type in true. And then we can check for the following condition. Status ID, is it equal to the current status? And when it is, then I want to return a one, and otherwise nothing. Let's close the switch function. And that is the second measure. So that was actually the difficult part. We have our measures, we have all of the fields that we need. Now we can insert a table or a matrix and turn that one into a status bar. So I'm gonna choose the matrix first 
Now, usually I go for the matrix if I want to have a horizontal status bar and a normal table when I want to have a vertical status bar. Okay, so what goes where? So we want to have a horizontal breakdown for the different status categories. So I'm going to take the status ID and drag it onto columns. Okay, so that gives me one, two, three, four, five. Then we also want to add something to values. We need to have, first of all, that pointer. So that returns a one when the current status falls into that specific category. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then we also want to show the status ID itself. So I'm going to take status ID, put it also over here on values. And the last thing that we want to add is a status description. So I'm going to add that one as well to the values. Okay, so that looks very messy. Let's go to formatting and put the values on rows. And that already makes a big difference. Okay, so values. And then over here we can turn on show on rows. And you see that already looks a little bit better. Then we need to get rid of the totals. So subtotals, turn it off for the columns. Okay. Okay, so that already goes into the right direction. The next thing that we want to do is to turn that status ID row into our colored bar, a status bar. Now, one thing I noticed is that we have here one, 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 and that is because here for the status ID, I'm counting it. Well, let's switch that first to the sum so that we have one, two, three, four, five, so that we can assign different colors, okay? Then let's go to the formatting tab, conditional formatting, and then here we can choose the field to which we want to apply the conditional formatting, which is going to be the status ID row. Okay, now we want to apply a different background color. And you see, that already creates our bar. Now we can do the same thing for the font color as well. So let's turn that on so that we don't see the actual numbers on that line. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is to turn that one into an arrow. Okay, so I'm going to apply now conditional for formatting to the pointer. So this is not going to be the background color, also not the font. So it can go down a little bit more. You see, here we also have icons. Now let's go to advanced controls. And then here we need to edit the rule a little bit so that we have only one. Percent we're going to change to a number. And then here we want to check if it is equal to one. So what we are saying here is take that measure that we created before, the pointer, which only returns a one if the status falls into a certain category, okay? And then, if this is true, then we want to return what icon? Well, not this one, let's go for a downward pointing arrow. And let's click OK. And you see, now we already have our arrow. And this is kind of the main structure of our status bar. Now, the only thing that we need to do is get rid of most of these row headers and the column headers, and then resize it until it looks good. Now, let's start under field formatting. And then here for the pointer, I do not want to show it. So I'm going to take the font color and turn it into white. You see that little one that was there is now gone. Okay, so now let's scroll down a little bit further. And here we can say if we want to apply it to the header, let's turn it on so that the header is also white. Now, then we can do the same for description. So I'm going to field formatting. Now I choose first that is description. Now for the description, we want to have the header in white, but not the values, okay? So make sure that you only apply it to the header, not the values. Then we're going to change the font color also to white. Okay, again, one step closer. Next thing that I want to get rid of is that background color that we have for the sum of status ID row. So this we can change in the values. And then you see there is this alternate background color, which I want to get rid of, I can make it white, or I can turn off the banded row style. Now, I do not want to call it sum of status ID, but sales status, or maybe nothing at all. Well, then you can just uh, double click on sum of status ID and rename it. So this is my sales status. Then we also want to get rid of these grid lines. Okay, so that's also a formatting thing. Go here to the row headers. And then outline, we don't want this, so let's turn it to none. And then also for the column headers, also there, outline, let's turn it to none. Now the column headers themselves, we can 
change the font color for. So let's turn the font color to white so that we don't see it. Okay, and that gives me my status bar. So we have now sales status, we have the bar with the different descriptions underneath it and the arrow. So now I want to have the sales status a little bit bigger. So that's the row header. So I'm going to row headers and then turn the text size up a little bit to maybe 12. And now we can resize the column width until it looks a bit better. And so just make sure that you still know where to find the column headers and because we changed the font to white, we don't really see them that well. So just drag it a little bit more to the left and you do that for every category. You make it as big as you want it to be. Okay, so now we change the column widths. Let's now put the descriptions underneath our bar nicely in the middle. Okay, so let's go to field formatting and then choose status description. And then here we want to align everything in the middle or center, okay? So we want to apply it to the values. And you see now the values disappeared. And that is because before I changed the font color. Okay, so what we do is we have to find a different way of hiding that header from before, the first status description that we have there. Okay, so I'm going to change the font, font color to let's say gray. Okay, so that we have back our descriptions. And now we have to find a different way of getting rid of that row header that we have there. So what we could do is we could go to row headers and then change the font color here to white. But that then gets rid of the sales status row header, which is something that I wanted to keep. Well, then we can jump back again to field formatting and then choose sales status. And then here on the font, choose the font color that you like. And then also make sure that you apply it to the header. Let's then also put the arrow nicely in the middle. Now remember, we have there the arrow and a one right next to it, but we just applied a white font color to it so you cannot see it. However, we can also show the arrow only and then nicely align it to the middle. However, this is something you do under conditional formatting. And then let's click on advanced control again. And then here we need to choose under icon layout, icon only. Uh, icon alignment is the middle. Okay. And just double check also here under field formatting that you put the alignment to center. Okay. Now with that, our arrow now also shows nicely in the middle. Okay, now let's switch back and forth and let's see if it works. So 2019, we had minus 18%, you see, very bad. And then I switched to 2020, very good. Okay, so that's it. We have our status bar and we can use it now on a report to show the overall sales development status or we integrate it into a chart and put it maybe in the top right corner, just like this. And if you don't like the arrow, well, then you can just go to conditional formatting and then here for the pointer, go to advanced controls and then choose a different icon instead. So this is where you can get very creative. So let's go for a star. And you see, now we have a star instead. Now, what if you want to have it on top of the bar itself instead above it? Well, we can also apply another conditional formatting rule to the sales status, okay? Because that is basically a bar. Then we turn icons on. And then here, go to advanced controls. And then we want to base it on the field that we used before. So that's going to be a pointer. Okay, we want to have the icon only in the middle. Then we can get rid of our rules and change it to the rule that we used before. So if it's equal to one, then we want to show an icon. Okay, so now we have the indicator on the bar itself. And would this work vertically as well? Yes, you can also create a vertical status bar. However, then do not go for the matrix visual, but for the normal table visual instead. And then you can put on the values, the pointer, status ID, and the status description. Then change the formatting, apply the conditional formatting rules, just like before. And then you have the status bar in a vertical format. If you want more flexibility for the pointer icon or a different icon for each status category, then you can do this in your pointer measure. Then here you can update the conditions that you're checking for. So first of all, the current status is it equal to the status category, that's one. And is it equal to the first one, then a sad icon, okay? And then for the next one, uh, just an happy until a happy icon. Okay, so different emoji for each status category. 
So now that we have updated our measure, we just have to turn off the conditional formatting for the pointer. And once that is done, you will see that there's now an icon showing right above the status bar with your custom emoji. Okay, so now you know how to build a horizontal status bar, a vertical status bar. The only thing is that when you hover over it, uh, you can still click on it. If you don't want it, then you can just overlap it with a text box, group the two objects, that's it, okay? Then one more thing that I usually do, and that is that I do not want to show that table, status bar, so just go there and hide it from the report view. And that's how we can build a status bar, all starting from a simple table or matrix, just playing around with the formatting and conditional formatting. Or maybe you have even more ideas of how we can take this to the next level, let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you want to play around with this file, I will put the download link in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next video.